Hello everyone, I'm Christopher Tan and welcome to Providence Money Wisdom, an original podcast inspired by my book Money Wisdom, Simple Truths for Financial Wellness. In this podcast, I'll be sharing simple financial truths to guide you in navigating through the minefields of misinformation and false promises in order to achieve financial security and peace of mind. Do not use short-term information to make long-term decisions. Every day, whether in the papers, on TV, radio or social media, analysts try to predict what will happen in the markets. Even professionals join in this guessing game. People want to know where the markets may be heading. And investors use the yield curve to foretell the future of stock markets. So, What exactly is the yield curve and how is it used to foretell the future of the stock markets? The yield curve is basically a chart of the US government bonds of different maturities, ranging from 3 months to 30 years. Normally, because bonds with shorter maturities have lower yields than bonds with longer maturities, just like fixed deposits with shorter maturities give a lower interest than fixed deposits with longer maturities. So if you plot a chart from shorter to longer maturities, then the chart has an upward slope from left to right. But when bonds with shorter maturities have higher yields than those with longer maturities, we say that the yield curve is inverted. Meaning to say, the curve is higher on the left side and then it slopes down on the right side. Why would a yield curve invert? From a bond investor's point of view, the price of long-term bonds is primarily driven by economic outlook. A grim economic outlook will lower inflation expectation, making bonds attractive. As bond coupon rates are fixed, higher inflation is bad for bonds and vice versa. Thus, bond investors will buy these bonds thus pushing up the bond price and pushing down its yields. When price of an asset go up, the return that is yield falls. That makes sense. From a stock investor's perspective, if he is expecting a slower economic growth and as such stock prices are likely to fall, he will rush to buy longer dated bonds to protect his capital. When that happens, it drives prices of the longer dated bonds up and thus causing yields to fall. Hence, whether you are a bond or stock investor, the yield curve inverting signals a possible recession and investors use it to predict a stock market crash. On 22nd March of 2019, the yield curve inverted for 5 days. But what is the track record of using the yield curve as a prediction tool? So we did a study between 1976 to look at the relationship between the yield curve and the S&P 500. So in our study, the number of times the yield curve inverted between 1976 to 2018 was 8. However, the number of times the stock market crashed within 2 years of the yield curve invasion was just 3. And therefore, the number of times the stock market didn't crash within two years of the yield curve inversion was five. So, we realized two things. Firstly, the yield curve is not a very reliable tool for predicting stock market crashes. Number two, regardless of whether the yield curve inverts or the market crashes, the stock market represented by the S&P 500 here rose in the long run. Now, so does that mean that tools like the yield curve and economic data are useless? To say so would be to make the right observation, but the wrong conclusion. What do I mean? You see, all of us, we have a wealth equation in our lives. Sometimes I call it a money equation. Sometimes I call it a financial equation. And whether is it our money equation, financial equation or wealth equation, it looks something like this. Income minus expenses, we should get some surpluses. This surplus, if we invest it 
and we get a return on investment that will help us reach our future goal. So income minus expenses, our surpluses, is the short term side of the equation. I call that the left side. And return on investment is the long term side of the equation and that is the right side. So left side, right side, there are really two sides to this financial equation. As I mentioned again, the left side is your short term financial planning decision. That's the income minus expenses side. And the right side is the investment side, the long term side. The thing is, many people do not realize that tools and data that tell us how the economy might be in the short term are meant to help us make short term financial planning decisions and not influence our long term investment strategy. They are using the right tools, but unfortunately, for the wrong purpose. Scores of data tell us that throughout the recessions, geopolitical situations or natural disasters that had happened from time to time in the stock markets, well, regardless of it, the stock markets always rise in the long run. This is because the one thing that drives long-term stock market returns is earnings. It is demand that drives earnings and population growth that drives demand. The fact is, world population growth continues to increase. So, if you ignore short-term noises and stay invested for the long run, you will get the returns you need. However, to do that, you must make sure that you get your financial planning right. If data and tools tell you that there might be a recession, make good financial planning decisions such as protect your income. What that means is that this is perhaps not a good time to change jobs. Be prudent in your expenses. This is perhaps not a good time to buy big ticket items or take huge loans. Ensure you have an emergency fund. Well, have at least six months of your expenses in cash or near cash instruments. Or lower your expenses further if possible. This is in the case you lose your job and can only pick up one with lower pay you will cope better. Lower your expenses further to build up cash or don't spend the bonus you have just received. Well, should the stock market really crash, you can invest even more when the equities markets are cheap. In the course of my more than two decade career, I have learned that to attempt to guess where the markets are going and trying to time, it is futile. My team and I would rather invest based on solid evidence that spans across markets and over time. Evidence tells us that to have a successful investment experience, we should diversify our investment across securities, asset classes and markets. Use low-cost instruments to execute your strategy and stay invested for the long haul. Do not change your long-term investment strategy just because of occasional noises. To use short-term information to make long-term decisions is unwise. I know this sounds boring, but if you want excitement, go to the casino instead. Thank you for tuning in to Providence Money Wisdom. I will be back soon with the next episode. For more information on my book or Providence services, kindly visit Providence.com. I'll see you the next time. All analysis, views or opinions from interviews, recommendations and other information broadcasted, podcasted or published herein are provided for general information purposes only. Information expressed does not take into account any specific situation, particular needs or objectives and should not be construed as specific advice or a recommendation. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with a qualified investment, legal or tax professional before taking any action. Provident Limited does not accept any liability for any loss whatsoever arising from any use of the information broadcasted, podcasted or published herein. 
All contents and information contained herein may not be copied or reproduced in whole or in part by any means without prior written consent of Provident Limited.